we're going to talk about Ludwig Feuerbach's God is a Projection of Human Nature. We can go ahead and start with Feuerbach's uh, investigation on the nature of religion. Page 400. Religion has at its genesis the essential difference between man and animal, said Feuerbach. Animals have no religion. This is because man is conscious of himself, and animals are not conscious of themselves in the same way. He continues on 400. Although the animal experiences himself as an individual, he does not experience himself as a species, or as a group of animals similar to him in natural characteristics and abilities. So the animal does not have consciousness linked with knowledge of his species and their nature, whereas the human being clearly does have this kind of knowledge. There's evidence for that in science, anthropology, philosophy, and religion, which is Feuerbach's focus. He continues, the characteristic human mode of being, self-consciousness, is the basis and object of religion. By object, he means what religion is displaying. Religion, as the consciousness of infinite, is the consciousness of man's infinite nature, says Feuerbach. Throughout the remainder of the excerpt, God is a projection of human nature, he describes exactly what he means by that statement. That the con that religion is the consciousness of the infinite, and, the, and that is the consciousness of man's infinite nature. On page 401, he says, Human nature is what constitutes in him his species, or the characteristics that we all share. He believes these characteristics are reason, will, and heart. So all human beings share in the ability and power to know, to create, and to love. Man exists in order to think, will, and love. Feuerbach says, it is simply impossible for man to get beyond the true horizon of his being or to get beyond his subjectivity. So let's take a look at this. Man's essential natural abilities to reason, will, and love. When a person is expressing themselves, or being an individual in a uniquely human way. They are reasoning, they are creating, they are loving. And we as a society, as a species, we value people who do this well, who project their nature well. So we value people who think rationally, who create energetically and efficiently. And we also value people who love in a particularly sensitive, or beautiful, or evolved way. We consider these people great people, they accomplish what they are by nature. They are beautiful expressions of our shared essence. And what they are doing is they are being people. They're being people in the world. A person is a subject with the abilities to reason, will, and love. Now, let's move forward and talk a bit about Feuerbach's, how he describes the relationship of mankind and mankind's self-consciousness or his knowledge of his species with the religious idea of God. Religious objects, he says, coincide or bring together, they merge consciousness and man's self-consciousness. Now, first off, what he means by a religious object, he's referring to something that man thinks on or projects. So when a subject or a human being, an individual, thinks on something. When we try to describe that thing, we predicate it, predicate uh, to that subject. We predicate to that object. We attribute the thing with characteristics. In that sense, it is an object of our consciousness or our reasoning. Religious objects merge our consciousness or just our being aware of things outside of ourselves and our self-consciousness which is the knowledge of our species and our natural characteristics, reason, will, and love. So, according to Feuerbach, the consciousness of God is the self-consciousness of man because these two things have directly coincided. Our consciousness of religious objects, like the notion of a God, something that we would attribute characteristics to, God is this, God is that, right? And our self-consciousness, which is the knowledge of our species, or what we understand all human beings have in common, 
These are merged together. And so, the consciousness of God is the self-consciousness of man, says Feuerbach. The knowledge of God is self-knowledge. And we describe God or have religiously described God in the past as omniscient, omnipotent, omnibenevolent, which of course is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-creating, and of course, most importantly, uh, all-loving. Religious man, or a committed believer, might not be aware that his knowledge of God is actually self-knowledge. And because of this absence of awareness, says Feuerbach, we have religion. This is why religion precedes philosophy, he says, insofar as religion is the consequence of an absence of awareness. It precedes philosophy, which is becoming aware. Philosophy uh, is our way to look into a religion, to examine it, to possibly move beyond it. According to Feuerbach, every progress of religion and it, it is a development of man's knowledge of himself. And in this way, religion provides great insights into mankind for philosophers to look into. Man, through religion, objectifies a perfection of himself. Now, man's relating to the divine being of religion is man relating to his essential being, according to Feuerbach. And man's essential being is a notion of mankind abstracted from its limits. I think this is a really interesting aspect of Feuerbach's notion of self-consciousness that, according to him, drives the idea of a divine being or a god. So you can see it like this. We know what we are by nature. We know what we can be. Yet we know that we will never be the perfection of our nature. We are flawed. This is a particularly stressful and difficult thing for us to think on. You can file it under reasons why it's hard to be a person. And prior to deep philosophical investigation into what it means to be a person, it's much I don't want to say easier, but it's at least attractive for us to project what we might be into something outside of us that we can worship. Now, this plays into Feuerbach's defense of atheism. He basically says, let's remove these attributes from the God idea, negate the God idea entirely, and attribute these characteristics back to the essential, uh, the idea of essential man or the notion of a per perfected human nature. If we do this, if we let go of God, we don't have to let go of the characteristics that God possesses, those characteristics that we've described over time and that have been fundamental in our development of uh, ethics and moral philosophy. Religion has been a successful exercise in describing excellent human existence, according to Feuerbach. We still value reason, will, and love in mankind, and that should not stop simply because we're capable of philosophically moving beyond the need to project it outside of human nature. We can grow out of this kind of projection and display our own natural characteristics. Basically what he's saying is we don't have to imagine a subject that isn't human once we recognize we are predicating human characteristics to that idea. So, what do you see here? In our religious belief, God possesses love because we believe love is the divine attribute. And love is truly a splendid way to express yourself. Maybe if we were all more loving, the world would be a much better place. Arguably, according to Feuerbach, if we focused on extending our loving nature and not on another entity's infinite love, we would be better humans. Also, according to Feuerbach, focusing on interpreting how the greatest love might be experienced beyond uh, uh, the existence of humanity has led to a lot of religious confusion, culture to culture. A lot of this confusion could be avoided if we were 
more focused on developing ourselves as human beings and we were more focused on actually becoming love. So one of the things that Feuerbach said in The Essence of Christianity, chapter 4, if we do not sacrifice God to love, then we sacrifice love to God. This week I'd like you guys to focus on that quote uh, and interpret its meaning according to the reading that I've assigned you and also according to chapter 4 from Feuerbach's Essence of Christianity, which I've attached in your content folder this week. All right, that's all I have for you, and I hope you guys have a great week. Please mess message me with any questions.